Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all. Good afternoon. Do you guys? Good, good, good. Okay, everybody's here. Um, it's an honor again and a privilege to stand before you and just to be a messenger of God, you know, just to be an instrument, to be used by Him. And as you can see in my title, it was about, you know, living a life depending on God. And maybe we woke up today and we were dependent on our alarm to wake up. Maybe we're dependent on someone to do our laundry so we can have fresh clothing to wear today. Or we could be dependent a lot of times in our careers or in our education, right? Because, I mean, if we don't have education, it's hard to find a job. And so we're dependent on that. Or we could also be dependent on family, friends, a lot of times on our spouses. But in the Bible, in God's Word, we read about all these things. But most of all, He wants us to be dependent on Him and to fully trust Him in our lives. And so, our text today will be in Psalms 1, 24, verse 1 to 8. And before I read it, we can have a, a bit of a background where, you know, the book of Psalms, between 120 to 134, 15 books, you're each called a song of ascent. So if you, so you know, sometimes they have like a title of the, the chapter. If you look back and look at all those chapters, it's all called a song of ascent at the beginning of those psalms. And that term means to elevate or going up. And a, the psalm of ascent were songs were often sung on the way to Jerusalem. And if you did not know, Jerusalem was built on a hilltop, and it was to visit a holy city. And for those that were among, around the cities that were around Jerusalem, for them to go to Jerusalem, they had to walk up to Jerusalem to ascend or going up. And Jewish people often went to Jerusalem during the feast days and to make sacrifices or to visit the temple and to celebrate the holy festivals that happened throughout the year. All males were required to appear in Jerusalem three times a year. The major festivals. I'm sure you will recognize the names of these festivals. right? The Festival of Unleavened Bread, Passover. The Festival of Weeks. And of course, the Festival of Tabernacles. And the Psalm of Ascents has also been called the Song of Degrees, the Pilgrim Songs, as well as the Gradual Psalms. And out of the 15 chapters, four were written by King David, Psalms 122, Psalms 124, Psalms 131 and 133, and also Psalm 127 was written from Solomon, and the rest were not really mentioned in the Bible. And so you might be thinking, so what are the Psalms of Ascent about? So I'm just going to give you a bit of a header of like what each one was about, and Maybe when you have time, you can read about it. It'll be familiar because these psalms were actually written into songs that we sing today. So Psalms 120 is a cry of distress to the Lord from someone who has suffered greatly. Psalms 21 is a song of praise to the true God who helps and protects us. Psalms 122 sings of the joy the Israelites had in the city of Jerusalem. Psalms 123 cries out for mercy from the Lord. Psalms 24, 124, which we'll be discussing about today, tells us the story of how God has saved his people from destruction. Psalms 125 is about dwelling in the peace of God. 126 predicts the future of Jerusalem and how God's people will be gathered there. 127 is reminded that without God, we cannot do anything. And Psalms 128 speaks of the importance of the fear of the Lord. 129 is a song of victory over Israel's enemies. That must be a good song to sing, right? As well as Psalms 130 is about hope in the Lord. 131 reminds us to wait on the Lord and place our hope in Him. 132 tells us the importance of Jerusalem. 133 is a joy about the power and unity of God's people among God's people. And lastly, 
the last of them, 134, is a worship song about the certainty we have in the Lord and the power of His Word. So what will this teach us today, the, these ascents? You know, Psalms of Ascents are chapters that really offers a song of praise, worship, hope, victory, and trust in God. It's written, of course, with passion, and it covers the emotions that we can experience today in our walk with the Lord. And as well, it introduces the themes of, of course, repentance, God's presence, God's protection, God's mercy, His help, His goodness, and His sovereignty. We are reminded to seek help and depend on Him, and that joy is only found in Jesus. And the Psalms of Ascent reminds us to continue to press forward in Christ into doing what God has called us. So here now I will, write, I will read Psalms 124, verse 1. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. In verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word today. I pray, Father, as you use me, that God, that you will speak through me, and the Holy Spirit have your way today. Let God, your People will just be ready to receive your word today. And Lord, uh, guide us and, and have us be mindful and just be able to focus on you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So my first point is, God is on our side when people are against us. Have you ever felt someone against you? Of course, right? I mean, who hasn't? I mean, it, it could be even at home. It could be at school. It could be when you go in Tim Orange, right? When you're in line, someone's already budding, cutting the line. Wherever you go, it seems like people are against us. In the first two verses in Psalms 124, twice David called Israel to recognize that their help was in God and God alone. And it wasn't just that Yahweh was present, but he was actually actively working on behalf of his people. He's on their side. So I'll kind of give you an example of how that could look like in our scenes today. I know Christmas is coming, and a lot of us might be going Christmas shopping. And uh, I'm sure you go with your wife. I think the husbands might be going with their wife to go shopping. And for me, it's, uh, it's hard. And so I, 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 can, I can see why they said Yahweh was present. So it's like when I, went, I go shopping with my wife, I'm present. And my wife is going into the store, and I'm just waiting outside. I'm present, right? But I'm not actively shopping. And so this is how it was, the opposite way, where you could be present, but not actively be helping. But God is actively with us. And this means that God is with them now and has been with them in the past. And if we could read, I mean, in the beginning, it says if. Right? That's, a, that's a big word, two letters, if. It's not that conditional type, like if, you know, like if, if you buy me this, if you buy me that, I'll be your friend. It's not like that. It's a matter it's not a matter of doubting whether the Lord will be on our side or not, because He's always on our side. And as long as we continue to walk in His ways. And this word, this two-letter word, if, focuses on what might have happened if not God. If the Lord has not been on our side, then for sure, definitely, we have been defeated. We would have been destroyed. If 
the Lord has not been on our side is also repeated. I mean, just like in some cultures, in some languages, you know, things get repeated just so we can emphasize it. Just like, you know, I don't know how to say it in Tagalog words, but, you know, I think I hear sometimes when people speak Tagalog, it's like, oh, this person keeps on repeating. It must mean something, you know, it's emphasized. I don't know the, a word, but I, I always hear, you know, I think I always just hear like, yeah, all it, all it, right? It's something like, like, go, go now, or do it again, do it again. It's emphasized. And this was what David was writing. He was emphasizing if. This is to emphasize. It's also because the second time it's to affirm. It's spoken as an affirmation. First, and the psalmist says, he says it. But then he encourages all of Israel to repeat it as an affirmation of truth. And we know David was power. He was powerful. But he still had some close calls. And the only way that he can be able to go through those times of trouble was the protection of the Lord. And that it was the Lord that enabled him to be victorious and to escape the times when he felt like he needed God's help. So God's presence is what makes it possible for his protection. And if you read through Jewish history, when men have tried to eliminate the Jewish people, God still protected them. As well in those special days during Passover and Hanukkah, they are remembered that, you know, God preserved his people. And obviously Israel is not always right, just like us. Nor do the Jewish people always win every battle. But they have been removed from their land, right? And as strangers to other lands, they continue to be harassed. And as well, even some of their people have been murdered just for being Jewish. But yet, through all of these centuries, they still survived it through it all. And their enemies failed to destroy them. So the same God who protects Israel is the God who protects Israel. Us, who have placed our faith in God and alone through Christ. God knows who belong to Him. And He promises that in Hebrews 13.5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And my second point is, God help us escape. And this we read through verse 3 and 5. Now David tells us of what would have turned out if they didn't depend on God. Then they would have been destroyed by the enemies. No, if we, can't, if we don't depend on God, for sure we have lost. We have not been able to escape. Yahweh wasn't just an option to their problems, but He was their Savior. We have many times placed ourselves in problems, I'm sure, through our own disobedience, and we can never really say that we were able to remove ourselves from those problems. Escaping has always come by God's help. And David described these potential dangers. The danger was like drowning in waters. It's overwhelming. I don't know about you, if you've ever experienced drowning, but I have. And it's really scary. It, it's almost like you're panicking and you just, you grab someone beside you and you want them to drown. I don't know if you, I don't know, it's, it's really scary. Like, I, I was swimming out and then we realized it, it was getting, it was wavy and it started to get deeper and we didn't realize we were far out. And my, I'm a good swimmer, I'm, I'm okay swimmer. <laughs> I'm not the best, but even if you're the best swimmer, it doesn't matter, Right? And my leg cramped. And, and if you know when your leg cramps, you're almost, you can't, it's hard to swim. And so when another guy was beside me, I was like, I was like, okay, go down. I can go up. <laughs> and it's really like, it, it's, it, it isn't fun. And so this is how it feels like. It's like drowning in waters. It's overwhelming. And it's not the slow type of water, you know, sometimes if you experience a flood in your home, you know, when maybe you flush your toilet and it slowly rises 
This is not the type. It's like a tsunami. It's, it's wild. It's where rushing waters just swallows you alive, taking everything in its path. And water is used a lot of times as a metaphor of destruction in the Old Testament. And we can read in Psalms 18, 16, it says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 54, it tells us the water closed over my head, and I thought I was about to perish. David again repeats and emphasizes the idea of danger was not only a political thing or an economic thing, but it had to do with our very life, our soul, in the deepest levels. And from these great dangers, God was the only deliverer and our help. David described many, many of these troubles that face us, that faces us today. Now he says that sometimes our troubles could swallow and devour us. Sometimes our troubles overwhelm us like a flood. Sometimes our troubles sweep us away like a torrent, like a rushing water. And if the Lord has not been on our side, it would be easy for us to be swallowed, overwhelmed, and just swept away. But it's not over because we live, if we live a life dependent on God, and we survive those attacks, and that we can say that as a living testimony that we are still here. If God is on your side and my side, it just makes all the difference. I mean, where would we be without God? And if God is with us, oh my, you guys, you guys are good. You guys are awake. <laughs> no, if God is with us, who can truly be against us? Now, that's just, just saying those words is so, uh, so awesome, and it's so it just gives us strength, right? Knowing that you know it doesn't matter who's against us, from left to right, from from center, it's because God is with us. Where would we be if we couldn't depend on Him? I mean, what would we life would look like if God isn't there to help us or protect us? or to save us, or to change us. Now, Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And apart from me, I can do nothing. In Galatians 6, 3, it says, If anyone, if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So if we think that we can live a life and go through life successfully without depending on God, on Christ, we just deceive ourselves, really. It's comforting to know that if we depend on Christ, then God is for us and he is on our side. In the original Hebrew, from the verses 1 to 2, that phrase had been on our side. It's actually past tense of the more familiar word Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when God is with you and I in our lives, it makes a difference in what we are going through today or in the future. And we don't need to be afraid of what we are going through. Because Psalms 118.6 says, The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? And my third point is, God is the creator of all things. And He is our help. Amen. To announce that the Lord is blessed... Is a powerful expression of thanks and praise to God. When we look back in our own life and look at what we have been through, the psalmist does here, we become aware of many times 
of his protection and help from God. And we may think, you know, we were about it, maybe we were aware about it at that time because we might have been depressed or disappointed or broken, and maybe we just didn't believe it anymore in ourselves. But if we remember the uncertainties of God that he helped us through, when we were able to, when we're about to be swallowed, we become convinced that he was there to help us. And I mean, it's, it's, it's true for, in my life where it, the time when you're going through those difficult times in your life, it's maybe it, it, it can be difficult to remember that God is with us and that we can depend on us. But we can always look back and remember. And an example in my life, I mean, it's, it's, it was in 2019, and it started uh, just when COVID started. So that's why you didn't really see me in, in pain. So, so in a way, it worked out. It, it happened during COVID. And so what happened was I, um, I exercised, and I think I was exercising too much. Is that could be too much? It was more of I was pushing too hard. And it caused my body more, more, more pain than good. Meaning, um, I exercised. So then I, I had a herniated disc. And most of the times they say 7 out of 10 people, after 2 to 3 months, you'll naturally just, just heal. Right? And, and, but within, while I was still in pain... I actually still was exercising. You know, guys, we kind of like, we push more than what we should. And so I was still pushing it. So, for example, I was doing this exercise. And so I just switched and do, did something else, which was like, okay, maybe this doesn't hurt, but this, this doesn't hurt, so I'll do this. And what actually happened, I was actually causing more harm than good. And I wasn't healing. So there was one morning when I was waking up. My alarm was on. I was like, there's so much pain on my leg. And it was just, it's, it's hard to explain. It's almost like it was painful in a way where it was like stabbing pain. And, you know, sometimes you feel pain and you can move in a way where it, the pain goes away. This wasn't that type of pain. This was pain where I woke up and it wasn't going away. And this was, happened for, this was happening for months now. And almost, I was going through this for a year. And the worst time, the worst pain was when I was waking up. And I was going through so much pain, I had to take extra, tre- extra, extra strength Advil. Not Tylenol. Advil, 500 ml, and I was a type as well. I didn't want, I'm not the medication type of person, so I didn't even like taking Tylenol if I had a headache. And so I knew I had side, there were side effects in taking medication, so I would half the Advil so I can survive from morning to lunch, and then during lunchtime, I'll take the next half for me to work. And when I wake up, this is, I felt almost like I was going to pass out because of the, of the pain. And so when I'm making my coffee, if this was our, t- our, our kitchen table, our counter, I would just rest here and almost like I was going to faint. But I just, I just wait till my body recovers and I'll have my coffee. And going in the car was even worse. Like I have to stand by the door and think and then like just slowly walk in. And then the worst was when I'm in traffic because sitting was painful. And so what I would do is sometimes I would put my leg over, you know, the shifter knob thing area because I had to like kind of stretch my leg. So I was driving with like one leg up on the passenger side, dangerous, but I was in pain. I was in so much pain. Like I was like, if I was, cr- I was gonna crash, so it's okay, because I'm really in pain. And then the worst was sitting, so I had to even recline my chair. So I'd be sometimes driving like this, and, and some people would be looking like, what's wrong with this guy? But I was just, I even wanted to open the door so I can let my other leg out. <laughs> That's just how much pain I was in. 
And even just coming out, okay, and this is, was even coming out of the car, I had to wait a few minutes to think of the pain coming and slowly just get out. And so I was in so much pain. And really, there's, when I come home from work, all I do is lie down. Because if I sit or stand, I was in pain. I mean, you could talk to my mom, to my wife. I, I couldn't do anything. I just wanted to go on the couch and lie down. That's how I felt. And that's how, that's how much pain it was. And going to work, I know I was in trouble because I was making mistakes. And you know, I was in so much pain because my mind was always thinking of the pain and I wasn't thinking of work. I was always thinking, if I make a mistake, <laughs> it doesn't matter because I'm in so much pain. And, so, and, uh, and I wasn't caring about work because of that pain. And so now, the peak of the moment of pain, and luckily, I was depending on God. If without him, I, 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 I don't know what would I, where I'd be right now. And so, this was at the peak of the pain. I was like already like, mentally like fatigued, mentally down, and just, just couldn't think of how can I continue, because this was almost like a year, so I was like, how can I still live like this, and I'm not getting any better, so I was taking a shower, I shower at night, some take a shower in the morning, I shower at night, and I just, that was a time when I just broke down, because I couldn't even stand up to shower, and then if I sit down, I couldn't even sit down to shower. So I don't know, I couldn't, I didn't want to lie down in the shower. Look, the guy was like, well, Alex, what's happening? <laughs> and so I, so I felt, I felt useless. I felt, I felt like if I couldn't shower anymore, it's like, I just, I, I, I was then thinking of God. I was just depending on God. I was like, God, now, now I was just talking to God. I was like, God, if this is what life is, I was, just, I was like, God, take me now. I was like, that's, that was my, my prayer. Because I felt like it, it wasn't, I was not able to do normal things in life. I couldn't go to work. I couldn't even sit. I, I remember I, we were celebrating our 14th year anniversary, me and Kai. And we were in a restaurant. Luckily, the, ch- the table was a high table because I couldn't even sit. So I was like asking, can I stand while we eat? So that's how bad it became. But I was like, God, if this is how life is going to be, I was like, God, can you just take me? I was serious. I was like, God, I think it's nicer in heaven. <laughs> there is no more pain. But uh, he, sp- he, he spoke back. And uh, God is, God is uh, if... If he is for us, who can be against us? And at that moment, he, uh, he showed me that he was my father. And uh, I, I, it, was, uh, it was clear because I'm a father. And uh, having kids, I know if they're in pain, I will do anything to remove that pain. And so when he showed me that, no, Alex, I'm your father, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of you. And so, I don't know how Kai came into the washroom. Oh, was I crying loud? <laughs> no, no. I think maybe because I was there for too long. And so, he's like, Alex, was, why are you on the, on the, on the ground? I was, I, just, I was down in the, in the tub. And so, she's, she's like, okay. And then so, I was like, Kai, I think it's time for us to go to the hospital. And... Uh, You know, God works in, in mysterious ways, and it's so crazy how, how fast it just happens. I don't know if you guys ever tried to book a surgery or gone to the hospital, and it takes a long time. Um, there's even a story like where the, the person beside me, his sister was booking for the same surgery. She had to wait for a year. And so what happened was, luckily, Kai worked in, uh, praise God, Kai worked in the hospital. <laughs> I was like, oh. And I'm usually the one that tells her, why don't you find another job? But luckily, she's at the hospital. I'm like, God, thank you for Kai working in the hospital. She's been there for 20 years. And so what happened was she worked for a surgeon. And so she called that surgeon at night, 12 a.m. And she said, and the surgeon told us, okay, come in the morning in emergency and we'll take care of you. And so we went there in the morning. I'm still in pain. And basically what happened was then they looked after me. They put me in my room. And the surgeon comes. He's supposedly the top 
neurosurgeon in Ontario. And so he comes to me. I know they always they tell you um, the procedure and what can go wrong. And so he's like, Alex, I'm, I'm a pro. He didn't really say that, but he said, you know, I've done these thousands of times. I just did one this morning. You're in good hands. But there are complications that, you, that could happen. And, but basically what was funny was like, so how come I'm uh, taking care of you? <laughs> he asked me, he's like, so what, what, what's, how come, what's the connection here? How come I'm doing the surgery? Because it's not normal procedure. Because I was just like fitting in to get my surgery. And so he's like, so what's a, what, what, how come this is all happening? How, how come I'm doing this surgery for you? He's like, oh, because my, my wife worked for this surgeon and he's your friend. He's like, oh, okay, no, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. And so this was during the peak of COVID too, so I had to wait for an opening because of other, uh, was more critical situation. So I was in hospital from on Tuesday and Saturday I got my surgery and praise God, I'm, I'm, I'm healed. And you know, God is a God that cares for his people. And it, he, doesn't, he will never leave us. And no matter what we're going through today, I don't know if, if there's an attack from, from, from people or it could be a physical or a mental, just know, that, you know, if God is for us, who can be against us? And, you know, David describes all these dangers, right? From like the, the beast with the grinding teeth and the snare from the traps set for birds. Now, with God's help, the people of God were safe from destruction. And sometimes our troubles could be grinding us down. Or sometimes our troubles can just be a snare where it's just holding us, capturing us, trapping us. But the psalmist here says what might have happened to what actually did happen. So God not only delivers us from dangers, but he also delivers us from present dangers and things that could be troubling us now. And so as we depend on God, we are reminded that we are to praise God for his protection and for delivering us from harm and troubles. So God protected us when we were in danger. And we see that in Psalms 124.6. It says, Praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. And it's clear in the image of being torn by their teeth. I mean, if you eat with teeth, I know you, it's, you know, we, it's easy to tear. And if you have a dog, even more, you just see their teeth. And it's a clear image, right? But what else do we see here in this picture is that when we read torn by teeth, is that when we are attacked, and sometimes attack can feel like it's tearing us apart and painful. But the psalmist here says, God will not let this happen to us. Now, God protects us when we are in this kind of danger. And the Bible is full of promises where God protects his people. We could read in Isaiah 43.2, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And also in one of the earlier Psalms of Ascent, in Psalms 121, it says, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you. The Lord will watch over you, come in going, both now and forevermore. So this life is definitely as well a spiritual battle. And as Christians and as believers, we are definitely not exempt from this battle. And if you noticed, when we choose a life dependent on Him, on God, He puts us in the front lines of the battlefield. Weird, right? He puts us in the front. And as Christians, we must be ready to expect and to experience persecution. And sometimes we must be ready to feel some of this discomfort because of our faith. And maybe some people might not like it and go against us as we speak 
and stand for the truth. But remember, God is on our side when we depend on him. Now, he protects us when we are in those vulnerable positions. And he rescues us when we are trapped. No, we read that we, he was actually trapped at that point, right? And it says in uh, verse 7, we have escaped like the bird out of the fowler's snare. So he was trapped. So expect to be trapped. Not that you will be. You will be. It's not that he avoided that snare. He was trapped and he was able to escape. And this is another picture of our life when we are depending on God. Because we don't get out of the snare, the trap, on our own. When we get trapped, there is no way out. It will feel like there's no way out. But because we depend on Him, He comes along and breaks and takes the snare and allows us to escape. And you know, we could see and apply this picture for example, in life like trials and temptations. In 1 Corinthians 10.13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But what you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So what does God do when we are tempted? He provides a way out. He breaks that snare and that trap and that vice so that we can escape. I mean, some of us might be thinking and feel that are trapped in sin. And, you know, you'll be like, oh, I think this this sin, this trap, it's it's impossible. How, how, How can I escape it? But we can believe and know that when we depend on God, God is there to remove that trap and for us to escape. And as well, it's applied in our salvation where Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.26 that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. So, I mean, we were trapped in sin. Satan, the devil traps us. But here is Jesus Jesus, when, you know, when we felt like no way out, he's there to take us away from the trap. He breaks that snare and sets us free. Free from sin, free from bondages, free from vices. I mean, what a different it is when a life, depending on ourselves, but a life when we depend on God. And so verse 8 tells us, now if the Lord made the heavens and the earth, Now, how much more can he do for us? Now, we can trust in God and a God that created everything, and we can depend on him. And what the psalmist does here is to testify that the Lord is the one who helped him when he was in trouble. And we can do the same. As we see here, we need to share to others of how God has helped us before and still helps us today. And it's not just for our own good, but it is for us to use as well as a testimony to encourage others so that they can recognize that they're in their life, needs, they need to depend on God. And when our life is dependent on Him alone, there is victory, there is freedom. In Psalms 27, it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And too many people trust in, our, in their own abilities. And when they need to be trusting and depending on God. So to encourage others to depend on God, and not just for the struggles and pain in life, but for their salvation as well. So Acts 4, 12 teaches that the name of the Lord, Jesus, and that salvation comes only through Him. Now everything good in our life, we owe it to God, amen? And not from our own abilities and strength. We can all depend and be dependent on God because He will never turn anyone away that comes to Him. I mean, He is our Father. He is our Provider. He is our Lord and Savior. He is our God. We can trust Him with our life knowing that He has created all things. So if the Lord 
has been on our side. Now we could, no, it's amazing that we can depend and praise Him. And a life dependent on God is being aware that God is on our side when people are against us. And that life dependent on God is being aware that God helps us escape from those traps. And God is the creator of all things, and he is our help. Amen. So I conclude today, and just to encourage us all, that a life dependent on God is a God where we not see an easy life, but a life where we don't need to be discouraged and feel alone because as here in Psalms 124, in this verses from 1 to 8, God is with us, not only present, not around us, but He is working in our life. And no matter what will swallow us, what will trap us, when we feel like we're going to be teared down, and maybe physically or mentally, but God is there. Now we can... Be thankful for a God that created heaven and earth, that he is there to rescue us. Amen. So let's all continue just to remember that a life dependent on God is a life where we can be a living testimony, where a life that is an example of him, no matter where we are in our workplace, in, in our school, in wherever we go, in the grocery store that we are victorious in things that we continue to live and just walk away from, from a, a mentality of not being able to be removed from the traps and the snares of the enemy. So we continue to live a life of victory and freedom. Amen? So I'm just going to close us in prayer and lift up today. In God's presence. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us that as we live a life dependent on you, Jesus, that God, you are on our side. That you are for us. And Lord, I pray that as we continue to uh, live a life in holy and pleasing, we know, Father, that we are set in the front lines and we can expect to feel trapped and swallowed by the enemy. But Lord, I pray that you'll continue to help us to escape. That God, that you are creator of all things and you are our help and that you are the help in times of need. And we can go to you, Father. So we thank you, Jesus, that as we depend on you, that Lord, I pray that you will give us peace and rest. Lord, that God, as we uh, depend on a God that is alive, and that is among us. And Lord, that we not depend on our own uh, strength. And we thank you, God, that we can be a uh, people that is victorious. That we can be a living testimony and share of what you have done in removing traps and, and just, just saving us from the enemy, God. So we thank you for what you have done. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let us just stand as I close today. We th I thank you, and I pray that as we uh, go out today, that you may be encouraged of what God will do in our life, and that we will be, that we are reminded today that God wants us to live a life dependent on Him, and He chooses us, and He wants us to be victorious. Amen. So let's just raise our hand as we close in prayer, Father. We rejoice in your greatness and power, your gentleness and love, your mercy and justice. Enable us by your spirit to honor you in our life, in our thoughts, in our actions and words, and to serve you in every aspect of our lives. Lord, send us with confidence in your word to tell the word, the world of your saving acts and bring glory to your name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and the blessings of God Almighty and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be among you, remain with you always. Go now into the world in peace and be of good courage. And all of us, God's people will say, Amen. Amen. Thank you.